So for the host hardware, I recommend having a single PC, preferably running Windows 7. Right now it's pretty stable, it's pretty smooth. It runs VMware Workstation really well, really efficiently, especially if you have enough memory. I recommend any workstation you do this work on to have at least eight gigabytes of memory uh, and preferably at least one terabyte of spare hard drive space. And you'll see why in just a couple of moments. But I often get the question, should I set up a laptop or should I set up a desktop for this? And that actually depends a lot on your work style. It depends on what you're going to be doing with this. Certainly laptops give you a lot of portability. There are plenty of really good laptops usually in the gaming class that will work well for ethical hacking. The i7 based laptops with eight or 16 gig of memory with a two or three terabyte hard drive, they're gonna be great actually. As long as they have a few extra USB ports, typically because you're going to use those for things like wireless hacking. I personally recommend VMware. I find it easiest to use with the attack tools. It's the most compatible when we're doing network attacks and when we're doing other different types of, of malware infestations and outbreaks, it seems to give me very, very, very few problems. It's also really easy to do things like switch the MAC address to do MAC spoofing, uh, to change the networking on the fly. It's really, really comfortable that way, especially when you install the VMware tools in the guest operating systems. I usually start with the guest operating systems as bridge networks, but I'll switch that to NAT or host only or just turn off the NIC depending on the context. And certainly there'll be a lot of context for isolating the computers entirely. And I always start with my guest operating systems running them in Windows Update, 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 update until they're fully up to date. Because the last thing you want is some kind of vulnerability or code issue or potential attack against the system that you're trying to attack from. And I typically have at least four guest operating systems running at any given time, Windows 7 32-bit, Windows XP 32-bit, and Windows Server 2003 and 2008. The reason I use these operating systems is because these are the most typical ones that I find when I'm engaging in ethical hacking approaches. These are the environments that I'm actually trying to penetrate and compromise. So I need to know if the right tools are going to work. I need to know how they're going to work, and I need to ensure that I can simulate that attack on my own system to both check that it makes sense to do, and also that it doesn't destabilize the target operating system. The question I often get here is, well, why would you have a Windows 7 virtual operating system on top of a Windows 7 host operating system? Why would I actually have a, a host and a guest with the same OS? And actually, that's pretty straightforward. When we get to the viruses and malware section, you're going to see that it's really easy to infect a system such that you have to revert to a snapshot or get back to a known clean install. Well, if you've infected the host operating system, it's probably difficult, if not impossible, to actually get back there without doing some significant amounts of work. Whereas if you infect a guest, and you need to get it back or it starts blue screening because you've installed a rootkit that's unstable, let's say. It's real easy to simply revert to a snapshot and it's gone. All those changes are gone. That's also why you'll probably need a lot of hard drive spaces because you'll frequently snapshot these machines as you install and play with and configure these attack tools. And finally, never, 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 never download and install an anti-malware or antivirus piece of software on an operating system that you want to use for ethical hacking. Why? Because we're using malware and we're using viruses. We're using a lot of tools that are actually going to flag the tools as, uh, well, these, these anti-malware and antivirus packages will flag our tools as attack tools or hacker tools, and they'll isolate them and we won't be able to use them. So word of caution, if you install anti-malware or antivirus on these guest operating systems, it's going to be bad news. You're going to get a lot of, of pop-up dialogues that say, I've blocked this for you, aren't you happy? And your answer will be, well, no, I'm not very happy because I wanted to use that tool. And you're going to be fighting an uphill battle. You're going to be spending time doing something that you don't want to do. And finally, this concept of air gapping, it's... Its name comes from having a gap of air between the computer you're using and anything else, whether that's a network, 
or another computer or a wireless network or a cell phone network or any kind of way that the computer you're using can interact with any other computer, whether it's a virtual computer or a physical computer. It's having this ability to pull the connection between all of these different environments that's key for ethical hacking because there's plenty of times where you're going to want to air gap a system, whether it's the physical machine, the virtual machine, the physical to virtual, for virtual to physical, between the virtuals, all of that stuff. Having that flexibility during your exercises and during your ethical hacks will come in handy over and over and over and over and over, and over again. And the rule of thumb here is when in doubt, just isolate it. When you don't know if this tool is going to destabilize your environment, isolate it. When you don't know if this ping of death tool is going to set off a firewall flag or not, isolate it. When you don't know if this denial of service tool will actually work against this operating system or that operating system, make sure they're only talking to each other, isolate them from the rest of the network, and then do your attack.